In the heart of the Viking world, a remarkable discovery reshaped everything we thought we knew about Norse warriors. The grave of BJ581 in Birka, Sweden, was long assumed to belong to a male warrior. However, DNA analysis revealed a female Viking leader, overturning traditional beliefs about Viking society and providing irrefutable proof that women held combat roles. Birka, one of the most prominent Viking trading hubs, was home to BJ581. Located on the island of Björko in present-day Sweden, it was established in the 8th century and thrived into the early 10th century. It was a gathering place for warriors, traders, artisans, and diplomats. Beyond its role as a trading hub, Birka was also a key military stronghold, housing Viking commanders and elites due to frequent attacks and conflicts. But that was the past. Present-day Birka is an archaeological site that serves insights into the world of Viking history. What's even astonishing is that the archaeologists have discovered over 3,000 graves so far. Among the 3,000 burials at Birka, BJ581 stands out. Originally thought to belong to a male Viking warrior, scientific studies and DNA analysis later revealed an unexpected truth. Surprisingly, this research sparked controversy among archaeologists. Swedish archaeologist Yalmar Stolpe discovered this grave in the late 19th century. Its location indicated that it belonged to an elite individual. It was situated on a prominent hillside close to Birka's fortified garrison, where mostly high-status individuals were buried. With beautifully crafted furnishings and a wooden chamber, BJ581 was clearly a warrior's grave. The individual was buried in a rare seated position, a sign of high status. Archaeologists found the weapons carefully placed in a specific position. The grave contained a full set of weapons, including a sword, axe, spear, two shields, a battle knife, and an armor-piercing arrow, equipment typically associated with Viking military leaders. The other important items further making the idea more strong were presence of a mare and stallion, and gaming pieces. In Viking society, these horses were buried with warriors to guide them through in the afterlife. As for the case of gaming pieces, the set included a board and pieces, similar to chess or hnefatafel, a Viking strategy game, suggesting she was a military leader or strategist. Other Viking warrior graves with gaming pieces often belonged to commanders, not common soldiers. Further illuminating the idea of a male figure, but to everyone's shock, the case was complete opposite. Unlike most female Viking burials, this grave lacked jewelry, so archaeologists never questioned the individual's gender until the 21st century. In the year 2016, an osteological bone analysis on the bones of this warrior questioned everything thought we knew about the Viking society. Charlotte Hedenstierna Johnson and her team re-examined the bones using modern methods. The pelvic structure and skull shape showed distinctly female characteristics. All the bones matching likely belonged to a single individual, meaning there was no mixing with another person's bones. No sign of visible battle wounds, but this isn't unusual. Even many confirmed Viking warriors show no injuries on their bones. Many archaeologists initially dismissed the study, partly due to Viking society's patriarchal assumptions, and partly because stronger evidence only emerged a year later. In 2017, a DNA analysis was conducted by Anna Kellström and Matthias Jakobsen. Researchers extracted DNA from the bone marrow and found only XX chromosomes, confirming the individual was female. This leaves no question. It was as rigid as stone that this warrior was a female. This groundbreaking discovery proved that no other confirmed Viking warrior graves contained a woman with such a complete set of weapons. This discovery sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Now that history had a new Viking warrior, a woman, researchers were eager to uncover her life. Her story forces us to reconsider Viking society. How could a woman thrive in a male-dominated world? The answers are both shocking and awe-inspiring. The combination of grave goods, burial placement, and DNA evidence allows us to speculate on her life. What was her social status and role? She was no ordinary warrior, but rather considered a military commander. The evidence of the strategic thinking presented by gaming pieces suggests she leaded and directed troops among the battle. She may have led warriors into combat or served as a garrison leader at Burqa, but all of these findings gave a rise to a new question. Was she even from Burqa? The reason behind the question must be the idea that how could the stereotypical society of Viking let a woman lead the army and fight a war? This makes us more curious about her origin. Was she a local or a foreigner? But giving answer to this main question was not an easy task. 
Scientists conducted a strontium isotope analysis using the chemical markers in her tooth. Now this revelation was another moment of shock. The analysis suggests she originated outside Burqa. This leads to a theory that she may have migrated to Burqa from Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, or the British Isles, England, Scotland, Orkney, or even Viking-controlled Ireland. But this doesn't mean that attaining that position was easy at this era, whether she was a foreigner or not. Every society at that time carry the same traditional ideas about the gender roles, but her origins also made us question about her appearance. Researchers were curious about her looks, and fortunately, her bones were well-preserved, allowing researchers to reconstruct her appearance. As a Viking warrior, she was physically strong due to accustomed, rigorous training. In the case of fashion, her clothing is unknown since no fabric survived, but she likely wore practical warrior attire. But besides all of the evidences and discoveries, some people remained controversial among the idea of a female Viking warrior. Therefore, this was quite evident that she was female, but was she really a warrior? This question roamed along several tables of debate. Despite the DNA confirmation, some scholars refused to accept that she was a warrior, arguing that the weapons may have been symbolic, as male graves with weapons are never questioned. Her bones showed no battle wounds, but many warrior burials lack injuries probably because most injuries warriors faced were not severe to affect bones and remained on soft tissues that healed over time. Moreover, Viking women weren't usually warriors, but historical sources suggest some were. However, the overwhelming evidence confirms that she was a true warrior not just a symbolic figure. We do have a historical evidence in the support of a female warrior. Sagas describe shield maidens like Lagertha and Hervor. The Anglo-Saxon and Byzantine sources describe Viking women fighting in battles. Other burials in Scandinavia have also contained armed women, though none as prominent as BJ581. But now the question comes, if there were other women as a warrior in Viking history, then why the BJ581 warrior is so important? That's because this female changed all the perspectives of our understanding of a Viking society. Firstly, she challenged the all-male warrior myth. Secondly, this showed that the gender roles in Viking culture were more flexible than we previously thought. And at last, this discovery act as a catalyst and inspired new research into other Viking burials some of which may also belong to female warriors. Her story reshapes history, proving that some Viking women not only fought, but commanded in battle. The Burqa female warrior stands as one of the most important archaeological discoveries of the Viking Age. Her grave tells us that Viking warriors were not just men, and that women could be just as fierce, skilled, and respected in battle. But this isn't the end of the mystery we are about to uncover. What this means for our understanding of Viking gender roles and warrior culture well, this makes us enter into the new world of wonders. The discovery of the Burqa female warrior, BJ581, significantly reshapes our understanding of Viking gender roles and warrior culture in several key ways. First of all, Viking warrior culture was more inclusive than previously thought. Before this discovery, the common assumption was that Viking warriors were exclusively male. The presence of a biologically female warrior buried with full military honors and command-related items, challenges this notion. The burial near the military garrison reinforces her high-ranking warrior status. She was buried like an elite warrior, not as a symbolic figure or an exception. This suggests that Viking society was more flexible in assigning warrior roles than medieval European societies that followed. Another new perspective born with this discovery was about Viking gender roles were likely more fluid. Viking women have long been recognized as having more rights and independence compared to women in many other medieval cultures. However, BJ581 provides tangible archaeological proof that some women could step beyond traditionally female roles and engage in warfare. Women in Viking society could own land, inherit property, and run businesses. Norse sagas mention warrior women, but until now, many believed they were just myths. The presence of a fully equipped female warrior suggests that some women actively fought in battles and possibly commanded troops. This challenges stereotypical views of Viking gender roles, showing that some women lived as warriors, not just in exceptional cases, but as part of the military hierarchy. This discovery also reveals that Viking military strategy may have included female warriors. The fact that she was buried with weapons, horses, and gaming pieces suggest that women may have played active roles in Viking military leadership. While the other sources, 
such as Byzantine and Anglo-Saxon records, mention Viking women fighting alongside men, and BJ581, provides physical evidence to support these claims. This means that Viking military forces were potentially more diverse than previously believed, allowing for capable individuals to rise through the ranks regardless of gender. This revelation also challenges the idea that women in history were always confined to traditional roles. BJ581 reinforces historians to reevaluate biases in how we interpret the past. For instance, over 100 years, the assumption was that the skeleton was male because of the weapons. It was only after osteological and DNA analysis that scholars accepted she was female. This shows how gender biases in archaeology have often led to the misinterpretation of historical evidence. It also encourages new investigations into other Viking burials to determine whether more female warriors may have existed but were misidentified due to old assumptions. This also reinforces that Viking lore and historical accounts of female warriors. While many historians dismissed sagas about shield maidens as legend, BJ581 suggests that these stories may have been based on real people. Some historical sources that now seem more credible, for example. Saxo Grammaticus, 12th century Danish historian, who wrote about female warriors fighting in Viking armies. The Byzantine emperor's court records mention Viking women fighting as part of the Varangian Guard. Moreover, as mentioned earlier, Anglo-Saxon sources describe Viking raids where women were armed and fought alongside men. BJ581 suggests that these stories were not just myths, but could be based on real figures like her. All of this gives us a, a new view of Viking society. The Burka female warrior forces a shift in how we view Viking culture. However, it wasn't rigidly divided by gender, it was merit-based, at least in certain aspects. Also, women may have played larger roles in warfare than previously thought. Moreover, discovery encourages new research into Viking social structures, military organization, and gender dynamics, and essentially, the Viking society may have been more complex, inclusive, and open to female warriors than many had previously believed. Besides all of these discoveries, we cannot ignore the fact about the sufferings and longings of women faced in this society which however is also historically and scientifically evident. Despite their relative independence, Viking women still faced significant barriers in their society. Although Viking women had more rights than women in many other medieval cultures, their freedom was still limited by laws and customs. Marriages were often arranged by families for political or economic reasons. Women had some say in rejecting suitors, but their choices were still influenced by family and societal pressures. Women could divorce their husbands if they were mistreated, but this could lead to social stigma. Divorced women lost some financial security and could be seen as less desirable for remarriage. Moreover, while women could inherit property, their share was smaller than that of their male relatives. A widow could run a farm or business, but control would often pass to her male relatives or sons over time. Even Viking women besides their power couldn't escape the expectations of domestic and childbearing roles. The Viking women were also vulnerable to violence in a warrior society. Women in Viking towns could be kidnapped, enslaved, or killed during raids. Female thralls or slaves were often sexually exploited or used for labor. If a woman was accused of infidelity or dishonoring her family, she could be shunned or even killed in extreme cases. Family honor was deeply tied to a woman's actions, and she could face consequences even for things outside her control. Viking women had more freedoms than many of their medieval counterparts, but they still faced strict gender roles, legal restrictions, the threat of violence, and the dangers of childbirth. Those who defied societal norms often met resistance or had to prove themselves through exceptional skill. The legacy of BJ581 continues to captivate historians, sparking mystery, debate, and inspiration. It also challenges us to reflect on how gender discrimination persists across societies. This isn't just a fascinating historical tale, it pushes us to question the limitations we impose on different groups. A similar story can be found among the indigenous Sami people. To learn more about this indigenous group, you can click on the video now popping on your screen.